How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to talk about a Unreal Engine asset that allows you to create an instant sky and environmental outside lighting. Um, if you have been using Unreal Engine for a while or following my channel, you may be familiar with this type of assets because I, all, because I already talked about one of them, which is Ultra Dynamic Sky. But in this case, we're going to be talking about Sky Creator. They do have similarities and certain differences. So I am going to talk about those later on in the video. First, we're going, uh, I'm going to give you a description and we're going to see how this works. Uh, little disclosure here. This asset was sent to me by the author, Dimitri, and but I'm, I'm not getting paid for this or anything. And I'm able to say whatever I want. And as you know, the fact that I'm showcasing it here in the channel, it means that I recommend it. But let's see why. So let's get started. OK, now, right out of the bat, the main difference between uh, Ultra Dynamic Sky and this one is the fact that this one is a plugin. So that means that it's not an asset that's going to be here. It's a plugin that you need to enable over here. Just look for Sky and you can see it. I have it enabled here called Sky Creator. And the way you look for it is it's nestled here under light. It's just one asset, so you don't have to do anything else. You grab it from here and just throw it in your environment. I actually have it right here, Sky Creator. And that's pretty much how you use it. Again, right off the bat, the first difference with Ultra Dynamic Sky. Ultra Dynamic Sky is usually an asset that you add to your project. Not much of a diff, like an issue, whether or one it's good over the other in there. That depends on your preference and what you like to use. Um, I like the fact that this one is a plugin and it's going to be on every project that I have and I just need to open it. I think that's just a little bit more convenient, but again, it's just a preferential thing. Now, the other thing that you're going to see that's different between uh, UDS and Sky Creator is the fact that the weather, everything is done in one asset um, for Ultra Dynamic Sky. You have to throw in the weather in there as well. And, and you have to kind of tinker with it. This one has a ton of presets that will allow you to get amazing stuff right at the bat. So now, right now, I have the overcast preset. So all you have to do is throw in your sky creator into the scene. And like if I turn it off, you can see I have no lighting. And then just choose a weather preset. Now, if you happen to buy this asset and you don't see the weather preset, just make sure that you go here into settings and do you have show plugin content because these presets are part of the plugin content that come with that comes with the asset. Now, a couple of things here that you can there's a lot of things like so many options that you can edit with this. Uh, but first, the probably the most important is the time of day. So right now I'm at noon, but I can tweak time of day over here. Make it nighttime. This is actually a pretty nice nighttime. Uh, let's go through some of the weather patterns. There's plenty of weather patterns here. So right now I'm running the um, overcast preset and let's just run through all of them first. This one does have some pretty, um, let's call it whimsical weather presets. So you have the Blade Runner, which is uh, the latest Blade Runner. I think it's 2049, 27. I, don't, I forgot. Sorry. This this is kind of that's that same hue that they had in the movie, which I, I think it's pretty cool. It's included here. You got a clear sky and you have a bunch of different presets for clear skies. You have a cloudy weather and, you know, different types of cloudy weathers. And these are, again, some of the ones that I call a little bit whimsy is you got the dark fantasy here and you see that my terrain kind of changes as well. And we're going to talk about that in a second. One of the things that I wanted to show you here is the fact that I'm using a uh, nanite landscape with displacement and the weather is it's also reacting to my displacement. So the displacement is working here with the weather preset that again, I want to show you how to to get the weather on top of your landscape as well. Now there's this other fantasy preset, which is the one that I like to use. It looks pretty cool. Actually, these times of day. 
look also pretty ominous as well. So these are some of my favorite presets. Then there is, uh, there's a fog, but let me show you the interesting ones, the ones that actually react with the terrain, which are the ones with rain. So let's go to rain. We got rain preset number one. It's not doing much, uh, just a little drizzle. But if we go to rain number two, which is pouring down, you can see how it not only reacts and collides with the terrain, but we also have some puddles and everything is wet. And everything is still displaced, which I find it. I don't know if Dimitri uh, took that into account or it, it just happened to work. I just think it's amazing that it works with landscape displacement, makes everything look extra realistic. Now, if we keep going down, let's see this uh, rain number three. It's kind of like after the storm. And you can see that we have the puddles here. And you, you can see that the rocks are still displaced underneath the puddle and everything looks wet because it's, it's been raining. Now let's go to, there's some Silent Hill one. This is, um, this is pretty cool. The fact that you have Silent Hill presets. And I think some of these are the ones that Pasquale Scianti, sorry if I butcher your name in. Um, he's been using some of these on his environment too, and they look pretty red. But let's go into the snow one. And as you can see, the snow one works and it transforms your environment. Not only do you have the sky, the lighting and the particle effects from the snow, but you also have the reaction on top of your acid. And I do have reaction on top of my mega scans right here, which I think it's pretty cool. Now let's go into um, this no one. What? Okay, this is kind of like after a blizzard, I guess. Oh no, this is the actual blizzard. So as you can see, it pretty much covered all my terrain, but it does keep my displacement going, which I think it's really important. So that's what makes this asset pretty cool. And you can see that the snow is actually getting lodged into places where you usually see it you know, being stuck. So this is great for cinematics. This is great for games. Uh, this is going to save you a lot of time when making different weather presets, because all you have to do is establish your terrain as it is. Like I'm not using any uh, snow assets here. If I transfer to the rain, you can see that the snow goes away completely. So I'm not using any of the snow mega scans. It just, it's, it's the snow that's part of this, um, this acid pack and it transform your terrain by a huge, a huge mile. So this is the storm preset. I think it's pretty, pretty cool. And that's one of the reasons why I highly recommend this. Now let's get into a, a little bit on how this works with the terrain and with the other um, meshes that I have here on my scene. So if we go, let me just turn off the VFX. So Things don't get slow. Go back to Overcast 2, which was the default preset that I had before. By the way, if you want to know how I made this ring, uh, there's a video in the description down below. If you want to see how I made this uh, cool terrain with displacement. But all you had to do is add this node in between your material. So once you create your uh, material terrain, all you have to do is right click, go to sky, and look for MF uh, SC material effects, which will give you this node right here. And then all you have to do is plug in your usual notes, your base color, your roughness, your normal, and then just output it out into uh, base color roughness into your final material node. Now, if you want to, you can create, let me go here, we create an instance. You can see that you can actually access a lot of parameters here. I don't have the instance on, but you can access all these parameters um, right at the bat just by adding that node and tweak several things that affect your terrain once you choose a weather preset that necessitates this kind of node. So that's pretty cool. The other part and why I think this is um, very convenient is the fact that when you have something like the mega scan, and you go into the material. Let's go into the material. When you have the mega scans, you 
always have a master material. So that's that's the MS right here. Just double click this one. And all you have to do is put the node in between. So right click Sky Creator. Pick this one. And in this case, because you have one pin to a pin, because you have a, mater a material attribute, all you got to do is pinch this result into material and material out. Just save this one. And now all your mega scans, because this is a master material for your 3D assets. Now all your mega scans are going to inherit this. So you don't have to do it over and over. Even if you bring new mega scans into the scene, like from Pixel, you will still because it reuses your master material. So that's that's another cool thing. Now if we go back and we turn it into let's turn it into snow, snow two. You can see that everything turns to snow. My mega scan, this one, this one, all of them are turning into snow just because I added that note in there. And that is how easy this is to use. And this this is why I highly recommend it. Now for the testings that I have, because I actually have both. Um, what I see is that this one has more features that you can tweak regarding the weather parameters for the terrain and the assets and the other weathers that you can see from the environment. Plus you get that Silent Hill and the Blade Runner and the Dark Fantasy and other presets that you'll have to make yourself if you're using Ultra Dynamic Sky. The other thing I see, this, this has a ton of parameters like you have no idea and again if we go through all of these parameters like here we're going to spend like five hours just talking about all of these parameters one of the things that i like about this is that it does have a post processing inside of this which i think ultra dynamic sky does have as well but here is it's a little bit easier to access and here is the post process. And as you can see, use post process settings. I can just turn it on or turn it off and have my own post process volume in there, which I think is pretty cool. The reason why this is so important is because when I'm doing stuff in sequencer and I'm using my own camera, I like to use manual exposure. You see that right now it's automatic, which is not ideal when you're doing stuff in camera with sequencer. So I usually do manual and, and I go from there. The other thing and I've, I've used ultra dynamic sky recently is i i think the presets from this one look a little bit better right out of the box i haven't done anything to this everything is as it is as it comes and i think right out of the bat it gives you a fantastic lighting scenario and if we go to the camera that i have over here you can see that actually everything looks great everything looks pretty realistic and this is why I would recommend this probably over Ultra Dynamic Sky. If you have an Ultra Dynamic Sky, I'd probably recommend this one over the other if you can afford it. Uh, from what I've been told, because I don't I don't see the prices anymore now that I own both. But if you can afford this one, I recommend you get this one. If you have Ultra Dynamic Sky and you want those extra features that I showcase, then I again highly recommend it. But if not, then Ultra Dynamic Sky will do. It's just it takes a little bit more tweaking to get here. This one is very plug and play, and the fact that it's a plugin and it's not an asset, it's very convenient because it will be in all your projects. All you have to do is activate it. Uh, thank you, Dimitri, for sending this to me. Amazing asset. He is always updating it, by the way. So make sure you you know you keep your stuff updated because he he had some cool stuff over there. Sorry, Dimitri, that it took me so long to review this one, but there you go. Um, the link for this is going to be in the description down below if you want to get it. There's the Twitter if you want to follow me over there. Uh, there's the Discord and there's a Patreon if you want to help out the channel too. My patrons are all on screen. Thank you so much to my patrons. They are a great help to the channel. Sometimes I have to buy the assets myself. I'd say nine times out of ten, I have to buy the assets myself and the patrons help a lot because... Uh, the revenue has not been great from YouTube lately. Thanks all you guys to, who donate to the channel. And if you can donate, just leave a like and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm so it noticed me. Helps a lot too. So thanks everybody for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.